What's up? Recall that in our body, most of iron molecules are stored in form of ferritin. From ferritin, iron constantly released into the blood to maintain the level of serum iron. Exactly serum iron fraction is the most important for us. Because exactly serum iron we use for production of heme, that together with globin form hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. Also we know that kidneys produce erythropoietin, and erythropoietin stimulates the production of red blood cells. The problem is that once iron appears in the bloodstream, iron can be used by anybody. Serum iron is also used by all tissues in our body, because iron serves as important cofactor for enzymes. But also iron can be used by bacteria, again because iron serves as cofactor for multiple bacterial enzymes. So bacteria desperately need iron for survival. The normal response of our organism is to kill the bacteria. So to deal with bacterial infection, our organism sends to the site of inflammation macrophages and neutrophils. And both of them produce huge amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines. It's interleukin-6, interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. The first problem is that pro-inflammatory cytokines inhibit the production of erythropoietin. And without erythropoietin, the production of red blood cells decreases. So infection itself predisposed to anemia. Bacteria spores are extremely dangerous. If they will proliferate, bacteria can cause bacterial sepsis, which is lethal state. So once bacteria appear in our organism, we need to get rid of them. So evolutionary human organism developed a specific mechanism how to kill the bacteria. We know that bacteria desperately need iron, it's a matter of survival for them. So iron is their weak spot. It turns out that macrophages and neutrophils during inflammatory response secrete interleukin-6. And interleukin-6 induce production of specific protein called hepcidin. The function of hepcidin is to prevent the release of iron into the blood. So hepcidin inhibits the release of iron from ferritin. As a result, the amount of ferritin increases, and as we know, increase in ferritin cause decrease in transferrin. So transferrin iron binding capacity decreases. Simultaneously with this, the amount of serum iron decreases, and without iron, bacteria cannot survive. So it inhibits bacterial growth until our immune cells, as neutrophils and macrophages, will deal with them. But the problem is that without iron we cannot survive either. Because without iron the production of heme decreases, and with decrease in heme production, the production of hemoglobin and red blood cells decrease. And decrease in hemoglobin we call anemia. Because the production of hemoglobin decreases, usually anemia of chronic disease is microcytic. So the logic here is that we have to kill the bacteria no matter what. It's of vital importance for us, even if it will cause anemic state in our organism. The problem is that sometimes bacteria know how to survive, and in this case, such tenacious bacteria can cause chronic infection. And during chronic infection, if the production of hemoglobin with red blood cells will be inhibited for a prolonged period of time, this can cause severe anemia. Exactly this anemia we call anemia of chronic disease. The usual response to decrease in red blood cells production is to increase the production of erythropoietin, because erythropoietin will stimulate the production of red blood cells. But as we see, pro-inflammatory cytokines inhibit the production of erythropoietin, so the level of erythropoietin will be normal or decreased. So the signature diagnostic features of anemia of chronic disease is low serum iron level, together with a very very high ferritin level a slow transferrin level and normal or decreased erythropoietin level. The main treatment option is erythropoietin, because as we see, pro-inflammatory state inhibits the production of erythropoietin, thereby we have to compensate this. Because we cannot use iron in the depot, in addition to erythropoietin, we can use parenteral iron. In order to supply at least some amount of iron into the serum, which will give the opportunity to produce hemoglobin. 
As a short-term option, we can use red cell transfusion, because in anemia of chronic disease, it's actually practically the only way to effectively increase red blood cells and hemoglobin level. And in a long-term perspective, we should deal with disease that cause such pro-inflammatory state that cause anemia of chronic disease. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 